Welcome to the November 2009 limited series tasting with my good friend, no, I forget, scratch the good friend part, my co-host Ed Marciano. <laughs> uh, somebody asked, I, I was interviewed uh, two days ago on a, on a podcast uh -huh. and they said... Similar uh, to this one? Yes, oh, uh, okay. but it was a video audio only. Oh, all right. It actually comes up tomorrow on Friday. And um, he asked, well, do you have any anecdotes about, you know, people that started with your company, you know, back in... I go, yeah, I've got a great one. I said, uh, the guy that I do my <laughs> video cast with was hanging around in 1969 when we were doing it. He's still coming around and we still taste wines together and he's a great author of the book. And so I touted a little bit. Um, you want to talk about the wines or no. <laughs> you want to take it to Wall Street memory lane? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this came to me and I had not heard of Fiano prior to that. And now I've had three or three since, nothing even close to this one that, that uh, we featured in the club. In fact, I tasted one yesterday that was like I couldn't drink it. But this one, it, this one, talk about jumping out of the glass and tr trying to show what Sicily can do in the white wine world. And this is really a great example of that. Love the color, for one. Nice golden yellow. Well, I've been a big fan of Fiano for many years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, uh, I, I, I don't know if your dad ever featured one, but I probably not. Because Italian whites have just started to really be made in a, in a style that's, that's universal or, or uh, international, if you will. And um, this is a great grape in, uh, in southern Italy. This guy, Caria, we featured uh, the Alianico from them. That's right. Uh, that was really just good. unbelievable. What Sicily's doing right now in the world of wine is amazing. For most of its life, it was considered, you know, the low rung on the ladder of, of quality wine. And as a result, they couldn't get any prices for it. You know, I mean, they were getting like a bucket bottle for their for their wines. And a few, uh, few people decided, hey, it's time to really make our mark. Because they got fabulous soils. I mean, it's all volcanic. Yes. It's, uh, you know, incredible weather, just like California. And you know, you, you were tasting wine at the wine house the other day, mm -hmm. is that what it was? Mm -hmm. And that gal that brought us some Sicilian wines we've never seen before. She yeah. came over here. Yeah, I know. I sent her there. I sent her here. She had incredible Sicilian wines. They're coming in, uh, I think, January shipment. And so this area, and you can almost taste the Mediterranean there. You can taste mm -hmm. the coastal winds coming over the vineyards and the gravelly soil and the volcanic soil that these things grow in. I mean, and indigenous white wines in Italy just excite me all they the time. Are. They are. They are absolutely really the fun. most exciting country in the world for white wine, as far as I'm concerned, because there's so many of them. You know, there are literally thousands of different white grapes that they grow over there. I mean, it's the same with red, but but whites are, just have really come into their own. And Fiano is at one at the top of the list. I mean, it's a gorgeous grape, and it's got all kinds of rather piquant fruit, you know, a little guava, a little lychee yes, nut, all right. kinds of things going on in there that are just not Chardonnay, not Sauvignon Blanc, not Gewurz, not Riesling. It's just all by itself. Isn't it amazing how you, you stumble across these grapes and they just represent white wine in a completely different fashion? synthetic cork uh, than anything that you taste from here. Well, like a few That's months ago, we did that Man, Man, Manzano. Yes. Made, named after a guy who created this grape. That's right. Yeah, out of this other, world. Right. Absolutely out of this world. Drove me nuts. I, I couldn't wait to taste it again. It was so good. All right. This wine uh, was uh, 1999 on the shelf, 1899 your first shipment, 1299. Oh, uh, I gave it 90 points. Uh, certainly worth more than that just from its interest standpoint. But I think if you wanted to compare it to other wines, I think 90 to 91 is a really good Yeah, good I'm, good I'm going to 92. It's clean. It's fresh. It's got wonderful uh, fruit components that are very exotic and can match with any kind of food. Flavors that you're not going to find in California wines, for sure. Um, the red wine, I flipped over this, and I love Pinot Noirs from, from New Zealand. They're just completely different than anything we grow. I don't really, I mean, I like Sonoma and Napa. They're a little meatier, but this really shows some leanness in the grape that I really enjoyed. And um, it comes in a screw cap like most New Zealand wines nowadays. No, just about all of them now. You know, that's just what they do. This is a 2007, Seven Terraces Pinot Noir. And I get I get all strawberry and, and Christmas and, mm -hmm. and, and spice. I just love this wine actually. And some earthiness too. Yes, I do get some, yeah, definitely get some earthiness. It's got a little age on it, being that the southern hemisphere is six months ahead of us on their harvest, so it's actually been in the bottle a little longer than the equivalent American Pinot mm -hmm. Noir. But it reminds me of the old Santa Barbara Pinot Noirs for mm -hmm. some reason. Yeah, it's um, it's got that earthy component that you get out of Santa Barbara County, even Santa Rita Hills. All of which are forty dollars up. So, so many times, 
uh, you want to say that a Pinot Noir is Burgundian, and this is not Burgundian. Um, and you don't want to ma- you don't want to match Burgundy necessarily if you can't because New Zealand doesn't have that climate and that soil that Burgundy has. So it makes its own style Pinot Noir, and this is a classic, just like its own style of Sauvignon Blanc when they're all oh, grassy. Without question, and, yeah, they're they're wonderful. But this is this is a spectacular Pinot Noir, and it. Um, what was the first uh, the first uh, one went out of twenty something twenty five bucks twenty four ninety mm-hmm. no no it's the twenty four ninety nine retail so it sells for first one went out of twenty twenty ninety nine right you buy more for seventeen ninety nine fine Pinot Noir look I taste wines I taste hundreds of wines a month very few Pinot Noirs come through and then to get one at this price that we can afford is extraordinary. <coughs> We did do the Laguna Ridge email special, and it was $25, and that was a great bottle of wine from, from that district. Uh, I think this rivals that wine, and it's uh, you know $17.99, but it's from New Zealand. Yep, 90 points. 90 points. Yep. I'll give it 90 points. Okay. Hey, did you get one of these yet, Ed? No, I haven't, but I've been dying for one. Now, I mean, it I, would look I good live on my whole life. Huh? It's me. <laughs> now, you walk in a restaurant with this, and you don't, you're carrying a clutch purse, right? And, uh, you know, we can do a black leather one for you. As, you no, know, I like the leopard. I'm kind of into the leopard. Inside thing, yeah. is your bottle of wine and your little corkscrew. Oh and these are available through the Wine Look Up gift catalog. We actually found this because we went to dinner with some friends and, and one of the gals brought it. And she walked in the restaurant. I go, that's a cute purse. She goes, no, it's my wine. So we have them in our catalog. And I think you'll see this catalog coming your way in your uh, shipments and in the mail. And the Classy Girl, we call it the Classy Girl, is available through that uh, with free shipping. And it'll be gift wrapped and delivered to your recipient. So look for that gift catalog. Have a happy holidays and a great Thanksgiving. Good Thanksgiving wines, both of these. Both of these are great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll see you in December. Salute. Salute.